Welcome back everyone. We are doing a beautiful study in the book of Revelation and we have come up to chapter 7. I just thought it might be useful to recap at this point in time before we continue. So if we look at the visions from the inception of the book of Revelation, we see in the first vision Jesus glorified. Jesus in his glorified form appears unto John when Holy Spirit speaks to him. Then we see Jesus writing letters to the churches, telling the churches how to live on earth, not unlike Ecclesiastes. In other words, living under the sun but bearing heaven in mind. Then he says, come up here, and he calls us all heavenwards into the throne room and temple, where he declares to us how that the whole process came to be declaring the eternal redemptive plan of Father God and that it was only Jesus as the Lamb who could unfold this plan. This culminated in the cross, death and resurrection of the Lamb in terms of the great earthquake and Pentecost following closely behind with the sun, moon and stars as changes. Then there is a very real sense of impending judgment from God that how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? So the inevitability of facing God's judgment is declared so that we can go out and make disciples because God not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. So now we're ready for chapter 7 verse 1. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on the earth or sea or against any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the earth and sea, saying, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. It is clear from the angel's warning and the description of the function and the authority of these four angels that they have power to harm and that their impact have, will have a detrimental and harmful effect wherever their winds pass through. But there is a contrast here because it refers to harming the earth, the seas and or the trees. And this, these winds in, 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 in the Greek means gusting or blowing against, and we're going to look at that again, or preventing further progress. First of all, let's understand that form of judgment. And when we look at the Old Testament, we see similar imagery when Jeremiah prophesied, and I will bring upon Elam the four winds and the four quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them to all those winds, and there will be no nation to which those driven out of Elam shall not come in Jeremiah 49 verse 36. So somehow we see this as a universal judgment. It is characterized by these four gusting winds under the control of four angels and it possibly comes or covers all the directions. It's important to emphasize that, that it's about timing and opportunity. The angel who announces their restriction has the seal. Now, then we know there's no other name by which a man can be saved except that of Jesus. No one comes to the Father except through me. No other foundation can man lay except that of Jesus. So the mark that sets a person apart in terms of being God's people can only come from Jesus. So this is very, very important. So there is a time 
issue here, and the Greek word here for hurt or harm is, is adikeo. And it means to do wrong, hurt or harm. And this judgment will ensue. It's kept back, but it will happen. The winds of suffering will come for those who have aligned themselves against the Lamb and His mark. It is the believer's mark that will set them apart from the rest of the world. A mark on the forehead. Later we will see in Revelation 14, And I saw and lo, a lamb, having stood upon Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having the name of his father written upon their foreheads. And we'll see that this group of people, just like all other believers, must have the father's vision in their mind, foremost in their mind, in other words, on their forehead. So one could sense here that the background to this vision, this one in chapter 7, is a wrapping up of all wickedness, sin and evil. But it cannot be completed until the fullness of the remnant and the Gentiles have come in. So in a sense, what we really pick up here is that it, it's about dealing with evil forever. For this reason, the Son of God was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now that would include all who reject Jesus because they passively submitted themselves unto the enemy. So there is a timing here before the four winds are released. And the terminology is very inclusive. All possible life forms and habitations are mentioned. The sea represents the world. The earth depicts all those who have separated themselves from the sea or world. Desiring to be fruitful and the trees are those who bear some fruit, as in Genesis 1 verse 9 to 12. They do not necessarily serve the Lord, those mentioned here, but there is an opportunity here to be marked. So the opportunity itself declares that this refers to the common grace of, and mercy of God upon all alive in the earth and its inhabitants. That for the sake of the gospel, anticipating those who still have to come, that they may enter into the sheepfold and safety of Jesus through faith and receive the mark of the Father on their forehead. Also, in that case, must refer to specific grace, because only those who have used that opportunity will actually be excluded from those winds. Which means that a time was and is given for the message of the cross to work its way through the earth before a spiritual or eternal judgment is due. Specific grace must ensue this process to secure all who are marked or set apart in Jesus. And this is confirmed by verse 3 saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. So let us consider the we here. If the angel, which is most probably Jesus, because he's the only one who, who can bring the mark of salvation, then the we must logically include Father God, Holy Spirit, and all the angels who are there to minister to the saints. Rounding up his people, acknowledging that they should be free from the judgment that is to be poured out upon the inhabitants of the earth, because the moment we receive the mark, of course, we become citizens of heaven. The winds are held back powerfully, but one gets the impression that there's an urgency to finish off this evil. Hold back. Why did he say hold back if they weren't ready to release those winds? Paul declared, for all creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. The angels and all else have an impending desire to administer that final separation and severe judgment. But they have to be held back until all of God's people have come in. And the wind, as we mentioned before, in the Greek is animos, like animosity, a gusting or strong tempestuous wind. But the moment we are sealed, the gusting winds won't influence us. Here the winds are coming as a means to drive people to repentance and redemption, if at all possible, or else they will be lost. 
We must realize that for us as citizens of heaven, we have passed from that judgment. Because truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who has sent me has eternal life. He or she does not come into judgment, but have passed from death to life. For the world, it's the coming of the dreadful day of the Lord that they have to anticipate. And they are invited to come to full repentance and to come to the fullness of life as Father God intended it. Just again to reiterate that the angel that ascends from the rising of the sun with the seal, the only seal of the living God, it must be Jesus. He ushered in a new day, so to speak, from the rising of the sun and the new covenant. He is our eternal son now. The fact that there were five angels is interesting. Perhaps it rep represents the number of grace. It has a specific relevance here because it also says it will be the dolos, the servants or slaves of our, our God, has to receive the mark. It refers to us being in full submission to him. And let us not forget that Paul wrote that it's God himself who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. So again, it's the Father's seal through Jesus that sets us free from the impending judgments. And in him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. What is foremost in our minds? In other words, our forehead speaks of spiritual vision, our aim, even our identity, and God being foremost in our mind. In the Old Testament, the high priest had a plate of pure gold engraved of a signet, and it was to be worn on his forehead at all times, which was inscribed with holiness to the Lord. That has spiritual significance to us with an extra blessing. We are clothed in Christ Jesus our Lord, when we are baptized into him. And even though the high priest in type is Jesus, holiness unto the Lord, and in him we also need to venerate holiness unto the Lord, we must also realize that actually we are of a higher priesthood. We are of the order of Melchizedek in Christ. Therefore, our vision, aim, and purpose now is to always keep Jesus in sight, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith and to discern the will of our Father. So, the angel here has great authority, which we would expect from Jesus, and he shouted with a loud voice. His voice had precedence over all else, and his words stood firm. And it indicated the establishing of an immutable command by him. In simple terms, Jesus said, don't do anything till we tell you to. And there's an inference here of the levels at which servants of God operate from. All three levels are mentioned. Some will be closely associated with the world, living in and with the world. Some will have separated them somewhat, wanting to be fruitful and not part of the world. But then some will already be fruitful as trees, pursuing fruitfulness in God. But all who live like that need to have the mark of the angel which Father God had given him. For none should be harmed until God's servants are sealed in their midst. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the son, sons of Israel. So what does this mean then? Until next time, with the next video, find out. Blessings for today.